Hi, I'm Steve Cohen, and welcome to this week's Open to the Public. First stop down the Lincoln Road, the 24 Collection, we're going to talk with Charles Goldstein. Charles is the founder and owner of the 24 Collection. We'll find out why, after 20 years in the Bow Harbor shops, he decided to call Lincoln Road home. Second stop, we're going to talk with the legendary music producer, Tom Dowd. I had the honor of uh, going to uh, an event at Julio Iglesias' house that was honoring Tom Dowd. Everyone in the music industry was there, from Julio to Barry Gibbs. Uh, all the important people on the technical end were there honoring this legend of the music industry. We'll talk with Tom and uh, give you a little insight uh, about history from the mid-40s to uh, the mid-90s. Finally, we'll end up back on Lincoln Road, uh, artist Barry Masson. You may know his dad, Gene Masson. Barry works with coconuts, coconut trees, palm trees, real interesting works of art. We'll talk with Barry, find out how he got interested about in that. All of that on this week's Open to the Public. For over 80 years, we have served the public and other fine jewelers. I'm Scott King of Martin King Jewelers. Come to our wholesale showroom to see one of the largest and most beautiful collections. Diamond solitaires of all shapes and sizes, emerald, ruby, sapphires, and imported fine gold jewelry, all at wholesale prices. We are distributors of Audemars PK and Bertolucci watches, manufactured since 1912. Fabulous jewelry, fabulous prices. That's Martin King's 1074 Kane Concourse, Bay Harbor. Hi, I'm Ellen Friedman from Mark's Quality Cleaners. We're perfecting the art of making you look great. At Marks, we've installed technology that creates optimal cleaning conditions. Our skilled staff assures that every phase of cleaning and pressing reflect our mark of excellence. Marks, a Miami Beach landmark, is easily accessible at the breezy corner of Alton and 20th Street. We offer same-day service six days a week. Our new hours from 6.30 till 9 weekdays are geared to your convenience. At Shooters, every table gets a waterfront view and a mouth-watering selection of over 100 dishes from around the world. Generously portioned, affordably priced, and prepared fresh daily. Serve dockside or inside at Shooters, like Shooters Signature Salads and Pastas, Alaskan Crab Legs, Stone Crabs, Fresh Daily Catch, and Barbecued Ribs. Bring your appetite, bring your bathing suit. You can even bring your boat to South Florida's favorite eating and drinking experience in North Miami Beach, Shooters. Sure, Friendly Honda has great prices on new 96 Hondas. And yes, Friendly Honda lives up to its name. But Friendly Honda also has something that no other dealer in the world has, a cat named Senior. And it's Senior's job to make sure everything at Friendly Honda runs smoothly, from sales to leases to service. Senior even watches over the big guys. So when you stop by Friendly Honda, go straight to the top. Ask for Senior. And for the best price, shop Friendly Honda last. Charles Goldstein, founder and president of the 24 Collection, has a reputation as being a retailing visionary, yet you started the 24 Collection as an art collection? Originally, 21 years ago, we opened as an art collection. And let's go through a little history for the people at home. You old timers are going to remember the 24 collection, 24th Street, 2nd Avenue. Right. Then Bow Harbor for 20 years. Correct. Now Lincoln Road. Why Lincoln Road? Lincoln Road for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> the move to Lincoln Road was, you know, prompted by uh, a lot of thought, a lot of research. We found that our customers uh, actually were beginning to patronize it and frequent it. Uh, even more frequently than the shopping mall uh, and the entertainment of the area. And we f it was an economic opportunity to secure uh, this space, which was more than twice as large as our uh, Bound Harbor facility. And 
with all the construction going on, and you people at home, you'll know where it is. It's on Meridian Avenue and Lincoln Road. You may have seen some of the cute signs while you walk down Lincoln Road or ride down Lincoln Road like I was doing. We're under construction if our uh, contractor gets us done on time and things like that. If we concentrate. <laughs> That's right, they're our contractor. <laughs> you took a chance on Lincoln Road here, didn't you? Do you like to gamble? Well, most, most real retailers, uh, uh, do if they're uh, doing something other than you know cookie cutters and uh, mm -hmm. nuts and bolts uh, when you're into f fashion and the, the more fashion varies from the mainstream the uh, the more risk-taking uh, is involved you also like taking risks I mean when you started the 24 collection you start out with some unknown designers and these are some pretty good names at this point who are some of the people that started at the 24 collection that were really not very well known here in the states that are now household names the, we introduced to uh, at least to florida if not to a, a larger section of the country oh designers such as armani versace Ferre, prada americans like zoran we did his first trunk show ever uh, Robert Lee Morris, David Yerman, and a, and a host of others. There were no biggies in there, were there? I mean. they, uh, <laughs> no one could spell their names then. <laughs> and don't test me now to see if I can spell them now because that's not my bag. The hot designers now, the hot people that you're featuring at the 24 collection now that uh, aren't household names at this point. Most of them are, are, word, are names that, that I can hardly produce as pronounce it as well, though we do have a few, uh, such as Emilio Pucci, who's, who's enjoying a, uh, a renaissance, similarly to as, as, as is Lincoln Road. Uh, and Pucci we represent exclusively in uh, South Florida, uh, and as is 90% of the merchandise in the store is ours alone uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in this market. You won't find it elsewhere. You have a reputation as a visionary, as being able to see some talent coming up. What do you look for? It's not a, a you know conscious, uh, documented. Uh, you just see it and you like it. You know something uh, tickles in. You say this is good. Not scientific, exactly. <laughs> kind of like uh, some interviewing sometimes. People you know study and study and study, and all of a sudden you just go out there and you talk and you have a good time and it, it's fun. Same thing as far as. Uh, fashion retailing. Well, I don't have any experience at interviewing, so I can't speak with authority <laughs> on that. Okay. This building. Yes, this sir. What a fabulous building. And you people at home, uh, you come into the building, uh, it was a Rite Aid drugstore. Prior to that, I remember it was a, a Medco drugstore. I also remember the men's shop that was here. And what, it started out as a Chrysler dealership in the 30s? In 1930, opened as a, a Chrysler automobile dealership. The architect for, this, for the building is what was, in that era, one of the most preeminent. Uh, did other facilities, such as the Astor Hotel, that's enjoyed also a renaissance, and uh, the Atlantic Towers, uh, 600 Lincoln Road, and a n number of other beautiful, beautiful. Well, who was the architect? Name is Henderson T okay. something Henderson, and uh, <laughs> uh, and but but he's in all of the books that are uh, deal mm -hmm. with that Deco era. Now you start uh, building out, and you find a lot of treasures in here. Tell us some of the surprises that you found. Oh, we found milk bottles from the early 30s that uh, not many people would recognize that required the paper tops and the wire around them, and. We, uh, as we opened up walls, we found um, restroom facilities that hadn't been used and touched in 30 years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and just, but more importantly, we found a treasure of a building, uh, the ceiling. Uh, yeah, I mean, I look at the ceilings, and what this ceiling w had two false ceilings over it? It had two and a half uh, uh, ceilings below it, and, and it had been mutilated where they had... Uh, uh, punctured it to hang the other mm -hmm. ceilings, and uh, it's still not quite complete. The skylight is uh, still uh, underway with new grills to be co coming in, uh, and the, f the floor was covered with one of the, some of the ugliest vinyl tile <laughs> that anybody had ever uh, uh, invented, and they worked over a week to uh, remove it and to try to restore uh, what, what, what was here. And most people, I mean, uh, just so you people at home understand, you were born here in Miami. Yes, sir. 
That's very unusual. Very few people born here in Miami. But you grew up where, in South Florida and in the Palm Beach area? Well, very few people of my vintage were born here. <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm uh, born here. My family moved uh, as far north as they had uh, funds left to go after the Florida real estate boom, and that was West Palm Beach. Okay, well, we're glad you're part of South Florida, and we're glad to have you here on Lincoln Road. Continued success with the 24 collection, and you people who have never been inside the 24 collection, beautiful artwork, wonderful clothing, and uh, the man to my left is the one responsible for it. Thank you, Charles. Hey, Barry, what's the story? The story's this. Nobody beats Bach. Take a look at this. Diamond tennis bracelets from $99. One carat diamond engagement rings from $9.95. Thousands of gold chains, bracelets, rings, earrings, new and used Rolexes and other fine brands. And thousands of Seikos up to 60% off. So if you're selling, buying, fixing, sizing, bargain hunting, or customizing, nobody beats Bach. At Shooters, every table gets a waterfront view and a mouth-watering selection of over 100 dishes from around the world. Generously portioned, affordably priced, and prepared fresh daily. Serve dockside or inside at Shooters, like Shooters Signature Salads and Pastas, Alaskan Crab Legs, Stone Crabs, Fresh Daily Catch, and Barbecued Ribs. Bring your appetite. Bring your bathing suit. You can even bring your boat to South Florida's favorite eating and drinking experience in North Miami Beach, Shooters. Sure, Friendly Honda has great prices on new 96 Hondas. And yes, Friendly Honda lives up to its name. But Friendly Honda also has something that no other dealer in the world has, a cat named Senior. And it's Senior's job to make sure everything at Friendly Honda runs smoothly, from sales to leases to service. Senior even watches over the big guys. So when you stop by Friendly Honda, go straight to the top. Ask for Senior. And for the best price, shop Friendly Honda last. You're injured in an accident. You see a doctor. You're out of work. Then what? You probably need some sound legal advice. At Cohen and Cohen, we've been helping accident victims since 1970. If you've been injured in any type of accident, what are you waiting for? Pick up the phone and call Cohen and Cohen now for answers regarding your legal rights. Call Cohen and Cohen now at 1-800-33-Cohen. That's 1-800-33-C-O-H-E-N. Last time I was with the rock and roll music legend Tom Dowd. We're talking about the rock and roll industry, and there is so much history around that that happened. We need to talk about history. First off, let's go through the man of 71 years young. And, and I say that, I mean, you are energetic. You are, uh, there's a lot of uh, re rebellion in you still, oh, I, yeah, I I'm, I'm a loud mouth and I'm not afraid. <laughs> you, you sure know? you're not nicknamed Bubba? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's not Billy Tom either. But, uh, <laughs> but no, uh, I'm not afraid to speak my piece. I have uh, opinions and whether they're right or wrong, I'm not afraid to express them. And uh, if somebody wants to criticize them, I'm not going to stand up and fight. I just say what I think, and I hope that somebody hears me and agrees with me. And if they don't, I don't feel badly. I d you learn more from making a mistake than being right all the time. Uh, what was it? You, could, you only get your feet wet if you make a mistake. You don't yeah. die, nothing else <laughs> happens, so you just get your feet wet. Exactly. The most potent weapon in the history of mankind, the nuclear bomb, the atom bomb. You were involved in the development of that in the Manhattan Project? Four and a half years from uh, the day I graduated high school in 1942, June, until uh, they released me in December of 1946. That's four and a half years. Uh, I spent four years in Columbia University uh, in the physics laboratory, in Pupin Physics Laboratory. Uh, working with uh, James Rainwater, uh, 
John Ray Dunning and William Havens. Uh, Rainwater went on to win a Nobel Peace Prize in 1978. There, there was a an Nobel Physics Prize, yeah. excuse me. There's, a, there's an interesting quote you mentioned to me about Rainwater when he received, right. because this man to my right, who I can call you a rocket scientist, I literally yeah. mean it almost. <laughs> this man to my right, you don't have a college degree. No, I and do not. Rainwater, in accepting the Nobel Prize in Physics, tell the people at home his quote. All right. Uh, Jim Rainwater was part Indian. He was from California. Uh, he had attended California Institute of Technology and moved to Columbia University in 1939-40 to work with John Ray Dunning and William Havens on duplicating Niels Bohr's experiment on heavy water, hydrogen, deuterium, and separating an atom. And uh, his thesis and Haven's thesis were on that process. Uh, when I knew them, it was Jim and Bill. They had doctor's degrees, but they could not be called doctors because their papers hadn't been published yet for security reasons. In 1978, James Rainwater shared a Nobel Prize in physics for a paper he wrote in 1953 that could not be published in 1953 for security reasons. And what were, what were his comments when he received and the prize? And when Jim accepted the award, he said, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. I accept this award. It is most gracious. Uh, the fact that you agree that I was correct in 1953 gives me more confidence because I have since developed more theories that, <laughs> <laughs> that I can't tell you about yet. <laughs> <laughs> now, for the same reasons, you never got a college degree because you were working w when you were trying to get back into uh, New York City College. There were 98 elements or 96 elements, and you've already discovered another five elements, yet, yeah. for security reasons. Uh, the, the nucleonics, the neutron beam spectrography that I was doing, we had substantiated permutations on elements up to 101, 102, and we were on the trail of 103. We were getting ready to document it. But for security reasons, uh, at the end of World War II, some of that could not be uh, publicized. So I could not get credit for some of the science courses that I had contributed to <laughs> for four and a half years. And if I went back to Columbia or CCNY, I would have to take Physics 1 and Chemistry 1. And the people that I was being instructed by were lying through their teeth because they were with me when we proved 99, 100, 101, and 102 existed. So I said, to heck with that, and I quit. I mean, if for you people at home who may be in your teens, we have a lot of kids watch us, and the older people, I mean, you've lived through all of this history. What's the most memorable part of history? What, what decade, what year? Is there a year, is there a decade that you remember most that had its greatest influence on you or impact on you? I, looking back, I would have to pick the 60s. Uh, what about the 60s? The 60s is when the social revolution and the music revolution transcended all barriers that we had known or that I had been raised with or people 10 years my senior had been raised with. And there was a new horizon. Uh, rocket scientists were becoming <laughs> more popular. They Acceptable. Weren't, right? yeah, they, they weren't looked on as people with horns or <laughs> green skins. Uh, we were getting more into integration in the entire United States. And along with that, American music was being fed back to the American public, but with a different accent, an English accent. Mm -hmm. Because Americans didn't understand some of the things black people say when they talk about things right. fast and talk funny like that. And if it came back to you in terms of Chaucer or Marlowe, you would be delighted to hear <laughs> the same epitaph printed with an English accent. And all they were doing was taking your money. Ta-ta. <laughs> <laughs> My most memorable person that you've worked with. I mean, there's someone that really knocked your socks off to work with. No. I, it, if I had only been in the business a few years, I could say that. I have to go by decades. I have to say Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie in the 40s. Uh, what about the 50s? The Just 50s, names. The 50s, I have to say... Uh, can't avoid Ray Charles, my God, or a Bobby Darren. Uh, the 60s, I have to say Eric Clapton Cream. Uh, the 70s. Aretha Franklin. Aretha. Exactly. And then into the 70s, 
uh, by now I'm into uh, Dwayne Allman, the Allman Brothers, Leonard Skinner, uh, Derek and the Dominoes, which mm -hmm. is another version of Eric Clapton. Mm -hmm. uh, we get into the 80s and I get into uh, Eddie Money, Kenny Loggins, Dexy's Midnight Runner. Uh, and I get into the 90s and I'm back on the Allman Brothers and an artist or alligator named Tinsley Ellis and uh, Papa Chubby. I mean, it's, it's ongoing. It's constant. It's perpetual. The future. The future of the music industry. Uh, depends on the young people. Uh, one of the things that I am most concerned with, with young people becoming affluent in computer and computer sciences, a lot of them are creating things, and it's a new art form. I cannot mm -hmm. compare the art forms. It's comparing apples and oranges, no fair. There are young people who are computer proficient that have lyrics and music in their minds that can't play an instrument that com can compose magnificent records on a computer. And that is not to be equated to or compared to the people who are fluent at playing an instrument and writing songs, and that's a different entity. And, and the future of music, to me, is the young people melding these two sciences into one. And particularly here in South Florida, the South Florida reminds me of the New York I grew up in in, mm -hmm. in the With 30s, it being the melting pot. With it being a melting pot where we had German, Russian, Italian, uh, every kind of immigrant in life. Down here, Americans say, oh, yeah, they're, they're all Spanish. The hell you say? They're not all Spanish. There are 25 countries down there that speak Spanish, and there's one that speaks Portuguese. Mm -hmm. And every one of them is different from the other. And they all have a cultural contribution and a trademark. And it's going to be a melting pot where American blues, jazz, native Indian Florida music, and these different inputs merge. And that is going to be the future. And you're not going to be able to replicate it anywhere else in the United States except in Florida. Well, let me say this. I think the future is in good hands. If the young people of today, with all that talent, all the abilities they have, have some guidance from some people like Tom Dowd. Thank you, Tom. I thank you. That's very kind. Thank you. <laughs> Good-looking guy to my left, David Bromberg, advertising sales manager here at Gold Coast Cablevision. David, how does it work? I'm sitting at home watching TV. I see a Budweiser commercial. I see a Coca-Cola commercial. And then 10 minutes later, I see a commercial for an auto shop here in Miami Beach. Explain to us how, how that works, how many commercials there are during an uh, hour. Actually, what you have is there's 15 different networks that are available for local advertisers, and they range from an ESPN and a CNN to an MTV or an A&E and Discovery. And what is available is two minutes per hour on each channel for local businesses to promote their goods and services. So someone like myself who's been here 40 years, when the season comes, it gets real busy. So there's not as much advertising time available. So if you want to advertise, you need to do it now, don't you? Right. Gold Coast Cable Vision reaches 60,000 households, which is about 120,000 or more people. Mm -hmm. You can reach those people very easily on television because most of them watch TV daily. Now, what about doing a commercial? Everyone thinks at home that it costs a lot of money and that the people doing it aren't experts. There are some good people out there, aren't there? Some great people out there. Actually, as, as you say, the people that produce open to the public will actually produce your commercial. Ralph Budd, Eleanor Ho, exactly. the same team? The same people. <laughs> it's a small world. <laughs> I mean, so you people at home, I don't want you going out trying to produce open to the public. I want you to go out there, produce a terrific commercial for your business, advertise here on Gold Coast Cable Vision. How do they get a hold of you? It's very easy. Just call 861-6533, extension 3200. And what we'll do is we'll send a salesperson out, not to hard sell, but just to talk to you about your business and see if they can help you and we can help you be more successful. David Bromberg, advertising sales manager here at Gold Coast Cablevision. The man knows everything about advertising on cable. Thank you, David. Thanks, Steve. I'm at the 24 collection, talking to Charles Goldstein, saying, boy, this is some unusual work here. And he says, the artist is sitting right there, and the artist is none other than Barry Masson. The name Masson here in South Florida in art goes back a few years, doesn't it, Barry? 
Since 1953, it's been a totally incredible experience. We've loved every minute of it. That's why we're here now and uh, to continue on. Now, we think of the name and we think of artwork. You're working with wood and wood that's native to South Florida. Just give the people at home, for you people at home, this is a coconut. Wh what have you done with this? Basically, this coconut comes apart because of uh, the modern technology that we have with a bandsaw. All this turns into materials for growing ferns. The interior turns into either a planter or a bird feeder or a refined item. And the top turns into a coconut brush, probably one of the most fascinating devices ever used, either wet or dry in any application imaginable. Now, I, I sit there and I, we see these coconuts all the time out on the street. How do you come up with the idea of working with coconut? Well, when you have a, a love of the area, in the area, because the coconut trees were here, prior to 1973, there were 400,000 coconut trees mm -hmm. and they dropped nuts everywhere. And we were always opening them and enjoying them until we got a machine shop. Once we had the machine shop ability, we could open the pieces up in a very sophisticated fashion. And by doing so, all sorts of spin-off products actually Now, now let's out. talk about the tree. I mean, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at these items here and I'm saying, boy, this must be one of them South American hardwoods. What are all of these canes and various because artworks made out? we live in the westernmost portion of the Caribbean, things that grow in the Caribbean grow in South Florida. There's actually a line that goes across from Martin County mm -hmm. to Fort Myers, and we're in the south zone. So these are actually coconut palm and royal palm and black palm, and it's some of the most intriguing material I've ever seen in my this life. This beautiful wood is coconut palm and royal palm? The outside edge of the tree. Okay, and, and let's, uh, let's show. Here's the tree. So you're talking about only this outside, like, two or three inches of the tree? That would be it. And the rest form tubes that feed the heart. And if you focus on this book called Useful Palms of the World, it'll give you an idea. The book is about two inches thick. And the first four pages are key words that go from A to Z that tell the uses of the palm tree. And this is a perfect example of some of its uses here at the moment. We've barely scratched the surface, and it's gorgeous. Why the coconut tree? Why did you decide to work, you know, or palm trees? Why did you decide to work with them? Just your love of South Florida? Aside and from that, when, when you're given lemons, you make lots of lemonade. <laughs> and because of lethal yellowing and lightning strikes, lots of these trees become available as raw material. Mm -hmm. And rather than slice them up, we turn them into usable products. And the 24 collection has the good sense and taste to show our works here, and we appreciate it immensely. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have a favorite piece of work on the table here? I mean, the, this how is... How about the table? The, look, the look table, the, okay. The, the, table. the legs of the table, the you're right. The legs of the table are royal palm. The top is one inch thick black acrylic. Mm -hmm. The part that sits on top of the black is one inch thick beveled lucite. The, I use those terms interchangeably. And then on top are peripheral pieces that could be used as desk accessories or you name it in your, in your, your environment, including walking staffs, canes, sticks, frame strips, you name it. Well, let's get Barry to the future. Is there any material that you are going to work with that we don't know about right now that's native to South Florida that we should uh, look forward? The rock that we're on is mm -hmm. called Miami Oolite, and a little bit further south into the Keys, it's called Keystone. And we incorporate Keystone, Oolite, Palm, Day County Pine, stainless steel, and plexiglass, and those materials are good inside or out right up next to forever. Well, if you come to the 24 collection and you see this wonderful woodwork uh, in here, the man...